It's your boy J.H. Gibbons here. And then we'll see. And welcome to another episode of the Acromus Podcast, episode 105. If you are listening, that means you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you can hear a podcast. If you are watching our beautiful smiling faces, it can only mean one thing. It means you're watching on YouTube. So before you do anything else, we need you to do these three very important things. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. You see, the next time that you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling down your feed for some of the best gems that you can find online anywhere, the Acromas Podcast will be sitting there waiting for you to click on it. And most of all, we'll see. It is free to do so because you are decided to invest into you today. We're here because of you. We're here for you. And we're here to give you gems that's going to keep you uplifted as you go throughout your week into the next one. So please do all three of those things. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell, like our content. And if I can add another thing, Jay, can you please share it as well? We really would appreciate that because each one, teach one is our motto. It also helps us with the algorithm, each other like-minded people like you. 100%. And we, we love doing this. We've been doing this for 105 episodes straight. Every single week, obviously, if we would not enjoy doing this and we wouldn't still be here. So um, we love being able to interact with you guys. I, we see the comments. We see the we see the likes. We see the the answers to some of the questions that we pose at the end of our episodes. Um, and, you know, we're, we're we're just moving right forward. Right. We're diving right in. Um, what a week it has been. We'll see. Um, you know, this past week on episode 104, of course, we talked about if life requires a purpose. And um, there was someone who commented on our YouTube channel that I want to give a shout out to. Um, I cannot for the life of me pronounce her first name, so I hope she forgives me, but I know her last her last name, at least on YouTube, is Anne. So I, I do want to respond to the statement that she made, and it was in regards to her not really understanding if she did have a purpose or if life required a purpose or not. And it was a question that she even posed to herself. And she's also in the space of, you know, self-help, personal development, healing. Um, so, it, it you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with what we talk about. And I, I, I posed the question back to her. I said, well, for yourself, now that you've kind of come to the realization that, man, yeah, I'm following a purpose now, does life truly require purpose? And I, I have not checked back to see if there has been a response to that. But um, this is just another example of someone who has taken the time out, uh, not just to look look at our content, not just to, you know, kind of browse through it, but to connect with us, to talk with us and to to have that opportunity to um, to allow her opinions to be shared as well. So um, we want to continue to encourage everybody out there, regardless if this is your first time listening or your 105th time listening to stuff that we're putting out there, just communicate with us, talk with us, speak, let your voice be heard. And of course, you'll have an opportunity to have your story heard on a podcast episode, just like you heard this morning. So um, keep the feedback coming, keep the love coming where we want to give love back to you as well um, as we continue to do every single week, man. Yeah, for sure. It was such a pleasure to see to see the comment as well. And, uh, you know, just just engage with with our viewers. This is what we love and we want more of it. And we encourage you, encourage you to please just do that. We want to engage. Listen, we're as much advice as we're giving based on life experiences of our own and just two young brothers that's just trying to be optimistic through life journey. We're learning to, you know, so this is not just us giving information outward or dictating of any kind this is just us sharing life experiences with one another so please you're part of our community let's engage with one another let's help each other learn let's help each other grow and this is the best way to do it so we really look forward to those to those comments right so if you could continue to engage with us as you just as you just heard we'll be more than happy to share your story to share some of your feedback and what your thoughts are. And we want to learn a lot of things with you as well. And even just having said that, you know, we could take it a step further with our Chromas After Dark. So, Jay, can you get a little bit into that? Absolutely, man. Look, we are now, God, we're about to hit episode four today of, of A Chromas After Dark. And it's been it's been a wild adventure. If you've been able to tap in, even last week when we were talking about some of the craziest conspiracy theories out there, um, it gave us an opportunity to dive into our favorite ones. And it gave you guys an opportunity to listen to those and maybe make a list of your favorite ones. So it's still not too late. If you are on Twitter, uh, where we typically post our Chromos After Dark podcast exclusively available on our Patreon, 
uh, just communicate with us, right? We pose the topic. So even if you did not invest in the Patreon, you can still have an opportunity to have your voice heard. You still have an opportunity to communicate with us, at least from the point of commenting on the post that we created on Twitter, uh, posing, you know, the, hey, the, the most controversial um, conspiracy theories out there. Uh, and there's, there are millions of them, right? We didn't dive into all million but uh, we we definitely hit some of our favorite ones about UFOs and aliens and spirits and the government. It's it was so it was fun. It was so much fun, and we're going to continue that ride. Um, the next episode that we are going to have on Acromus After Dark deals with COVID's impact on society. Now, this is also a very very deep conversation um, that can go a myriad of different ways. It's also a very emotionally charged conversation. Uh, because we know how much COVID has impacted our society um, these past couple of years. And uh, we we really want to give you the opportunity to let us know how it's impacted you personally. Um, again, we are all about community building. We're all about sharing. Uh, so, yeah, tune in for the latest episode of Chromis After Dark, uh, COVID's impact on society. We're going to get a chance to dive in here in a few minutes. But um, with this episode on the Acromas podcast, we actually wanted to pull a little bit from uh, some of the subject matter that we have on Acromas After Dark. And this one is more of an exclusive episode, a, a sneak peek behind the curtain, so to speak, of what we do on Acromas After Dark. So we want to make sure that you guys are not taking these conversations for granted. And we wanted to introduce at least one special exclusive topic to today's Acromas podcast episode. And on episode 105, we will answer the question, are humans innately good or evil? Ooh, yeah, this is a fun one. Oh, man. Let's, I, I say let's just get right into it, man. Dive right into it. We'll <laughs> see. Um, look, homo sapiens are extremely complex, right? We are extremely emotional beings. Um. We have our ways, we have our quirks, uh, we have our opinions, and we are special, at least on this planet, in a way that we have dominion over almost all creatures. Now, that doesn't mean we can go into a lion's den and come out whole, <laughs> right? We're not dumb, right? But but in terms of our intelligence, in terms of our abilities to adapt, evolve, to grow, um, the emotional the emotional intelligence that we've been able to develop over centuries of experience. Um, it puts us at the top of all of this, but that does not mean that we are necessarily good or necessarily evil. Now, uh, my personal take on this, we'll see since we're diving right into it. I believe that humans are innately evil. Now Ooh. let's, let's ah. let, let that, let's let that sink in a little bit. Right. Let's okay. let's let that sink in. And I, I'm I'm gonna explain why I do believe this, right? Please. There is a time in our history that we do not remember because we weren't here. Um, but we have been able to see many of these things repeat decade after decade, century after century, millennium after millennium. And it seems like there is a consistent cycle of what I'm about to explain. You see, when a society is built, there is a governing body that creates and, and establishes certain laws and certain ways of living in order to, to ensure that everyone is making progress in society, that they are playing their specific role in society. Now, I would say that each and every time that society is created and then it's destroyed or remodeled in order to be recreated again, there are certain things that happen each and every time, Will, and stay with me here. Okay. At the beginning, when you have these established laws, you have these established rules, I think everybody living in that society could agree that, yes, this is right. This seems to be going the right direction. I can envision our future. I can see where our society is going. This goes to Greek society, Roman society, um, you know, Persian society way back in those days. But after a while there seems to be some sort of simmering buzz underneath that we cannot necessarily fully understand until it's way too late, right? We talk about tyranny. We talk about, we talk about taking over. Uh, we talk about, you know, being able to overthrow that governing body because we are starting to not have belief in the system anymore. We see greed. We see selfishness. We see 
we see adultery, we see a lot of things that are blowing up that we did not envision our society being a part of originally. So things are changing, things are growing out of control a little bit, especially when it comes to the governing body, there's a little bit of greed. You start to you start to notice that they're holding on to a little bit more money and power than they did originally, right? At the beginning, they're talking about, yes, this is hey, this is going to be a democracy. We're all in this together. We're all going to grow. Just trust us. Trust us five people up here to ensure that your life is going to be exactly what it should be. And then piece by piece, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, you start seeing things being pulled back. Things are being removed. You start seeing or you start noticing that those who are living at the top are going a little bit higher than they should while you're either stagnant or you're getting lower and lower in society. Things start becoming much more difficult to afford. The life that you have that you're living now is not as exciting or fulfilling as it was before. You are now starting to have to hold and hoard on the things that you at, at first took for granted and you have you have less and you are told to be if not more excited, as excited as you were before with less, to live with less. So what ends up happening is you start seeing the evil side come from those who are in power because power controls absolutely everything. And we've seen it in history. We've seen those, we've seen Rome fall. We've seen Greece fall. We've seen other countries recently fall into turmoil. Civil War, World War, we've literally had this cycle over and over and over again, we'll see, even before World War I. We've had wars in different countries, we've had conflicts, we've had all of these things that have continued to show face in society. It's almost as though what happens to a, a generation of people who have lived through these things they have not been able to pass on the lessons to us so that we may understand how to not repeat history. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we're continuing to go back to these days. It's only it's only been uh, it's uh, well, it's close to now 100 years since we had our last world war. Right. Yeah. So what's going to happen in the next few years? Are we going back to that? We see what we see the conflict that is happening in Russia right now. We see we know our relationship with China is really on the deep end. You know, we 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 briefly mentioned COVID and its impact on society. We've seen what's been going on now. We we've seen people at you know at a, a bit of unrest. You know, especially in our society now, it's getting harder to afford things, especially eggs for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, we start we're starting to see a lot of us become frustrated with where we are because of those who are in power, who have been able to seize that power. They are living the life of luxury. And at least that's what we're seeing. Even if that isn't the case, optics, right? Our perception of reality is what we are holding on to. And for me, I truly believe we'll see. Uh, this all comes full circle. If we did not have the laws and the rules that are in place from government or whoever, and, and especially those who don't believe in a higher power or don't believe in an afterlife, if we did not have those rules, how would we be reacting? If there was no such thing as jail time, if there was no such thing as consequences, at least consequences that'll, that'll take us away from the life that we are enjoying now, would we still be good or would we be selfish? Would we go out and take back everything that's ours? Would we loot? Would we rob? Which we have been doing, and and it, we we've seen that, right? We start we start to see this type of collapse in places like California and places like Oregon, where some of these laws and some of the, some of the enforcement of the laws have been a little bit more lax than typical. We've seen people go crazy. We've seen videos of people running into stores, grabbing everything they can and going and, and just leaving without any type of repercussions, without arrests, without without any sort of consequences being faced. Now, let's say those laws are lax every single place around the country, especially based on what is going on in our society now. The fact that we can't afford enough to survive. Could you imagine if those laws relaxed every single place in this country? Are you telling me we'll see? And everybody out there, I'm posing this question to you right now. Are you telling me that we will still take the high road? We will still take our money? We will still buy the goods that we need to buy? Or would we go in and take everything that's there? Right? And I mm -hmm. think 
I think the laws that are in place now are in place to protect ourselves from ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that if, as I mentioned, if we didn't have these laws that were in place, I just don't believe we would be following any sort of rule. I think mm -hmm. that it'll be a free for all. I think that we'd be, our, our selfish motivations would come out, um, especially if we're thinking about our family that still needs to be fed. Right. And then it, it begs the question, are you willing to steal or kill for a loaf of bread to save your own family? Is that innately evil? Right. Or is that is that is that you being good enough to feed your own family and not worry about anybody else's? Right. So mm -hmm. I think to answer the question for me, we'll see. I think human nature in general, we we are able to justify the evilness that comes about the things that we end up doing. And if we are able to justify it, does it mean that we are evil? I, I truly believe that that it does mean that we'll see. Um I, I think I think on the other side of it being good, um, especially when it comes to humans, I, I don't I don't think that that is the case only because of the laws that we have in place. I, I believe if our government structure was different, then we would be different. I, I feel as though we would be we would be much more selfish. We would be much more greedy than we are now. And I think the laws that are in place are kind of keeping us sane and they're keeping us. They're keeping us straight. And I think if we were to go away from those laws and those rules that we have in society, and if if for whatever reason we determine that heaven or hell didn't exist, I think this whole world will be in a, a complete free-for-all. What are your takes on that? We'll see. Damn. Okay. Uh, wow. That was well articulated. Uh, I, I respect your, your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I definitely resonate with a lot of what you said, but I'm going to play devil's advocate, man. And okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with us being innately good to our, to be, we, and, and here, and here's why. Sure. I'm going to pick up on that, on that end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously it comes down to a few things. <clears throat> See, it's not as simple as a yes or no to whether we're evil or we're good. It's a simple uh, simplicity of morality right like and perspective right and experience i truly believe experience molds the individual now take us out of modern society and what we've established in humanity and look at it in a simplistic form as opposed to animals animals are have instinctive needs but they're also taught right a lion is taught how to hunt, you know, and just like you have any other predatory animal that's taught how to kill. Now, if you look at it for humans, I feel like we end up on one end or the other of the spe spectrum, which decides ultimately your outlook in humanity, which ultimately would then decide your morality. I feel like we operate on a scale of Either you're on the side of fear that drives your decision making and your actions and intentionality, or you're on the side of hope, which drives your intentions and your desire for something more and something better. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, that holds you in place. Now, the guardrail for us is the rules and governing bodies that we have in place sure. to keep equilibrium where it needs to be. I do want to believe that if you take that out of the equation, that we could be better if we choose to be better, mm -hmm. if we think that we are, because it's perspective. And that lies on the side of hope. You would have people, you wouldn't have people who believe in religions if they didn't have hope mm -hmm. for some for something better than what is now, regardless. Otherwise you have a world where everyone thinks the same way. You have a world where everyone relies in fear to control everything. Fear controls a lot in society today. It overpowers a lot. You saw what happened with COVID, where people had the greed and the need to go get more masks, the more things than what they needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but you also had people out there who were thoughtful of, you know, think about like, those who were in the in the health field 
who sacrificed their lives. They obviously believed in nothing because hell, hell they could have not done that too. You know, it could be like, oh, I don't know what this is. I want no part of it. Because people that people that people forget that people in the health field died too. And they should be mm -hmm. honored. No different than anyone else that's given service to this country or their country. So it comes down to a power of choice. If the world, if we were to go get to a point in, in day and age where the world would revert back to its primal state, obviously survival would be a thing. But I choose to believe that we are we we are we are good to our core because I know me. Now, here's the thing. The power of choice is what dictates that for you. Mm. Now, we can't control what we think that comes into our mind. We all have thoughts. Some, albeit, you could view as good and not so good. But how we act on them is ultimately the side of on who we are as people. Right? So in order to get to that point, the experiences have to be molded to even understand it. Look, you're not going to have someone that's just born racist. Right? This is something that's habitual, something that's taught to them, something that they're taught out of fear, right? Something that they don't understand, but they're taught and they go with that until they're capable of making their own choices. In some cases, some people are able to look at the entire ocean and not just the pond that they're in and realize that there's more to others than what they were perceived to have known. So I do believe it's a matter of perspectives. I think it really comes down to recognizing the power of the decisions and choice you make and not leading blindly through fear, but rather through hope. Because why would we be doing this podcast now if we didn't believe in a better tomorrow? Because 99.9% .9 of everything out there, these podcasts or any other podcasts out there, it's talking about things that is nothing like this. Mm. And we're that, barely that 1% that's out there that's investing in you. Mm. That's hope, people. That's hope in a better tomorrow. That's hope that 100 years from now, something like this can help people stay uplifted, help keep their mind where it needs to be, help them develop into who they desire to become to be better. That's the beauty of life, is the choice of when you realize you have a choice, is to be better so you do better. Not because you can act on something and, and, and take advantage of something. We are in a society where everyone wants to thrive, mm. but you don't need to take from your fellow man to get there. You can work with them to get to exactly where you want to go. Mm. But that's a choice. So for me and my life, and at this point, I'll be, you can take your own personal stories, people, Everyone can relate to this. You've had so many moments of adversity, so many moments of trauma, so many mo life decision moments that could have changed you to your core, that hurt you to your soul, that could have made you say, you know what, to hell with this and to hell with everyone. I give up. I'm going to be everything they think I am. I'm going to do everything they thought I should do because they think it anyway. But you decided to bet on you. You decided to stop in and you're listening to this now. So there is good in us. There is good in humanity. And we've had historical figures to show that. I'm not saying that they were perfect people. Let's be clear here. By nature, we are flawed. So we are given that opportunity, Jay. We are given that opportunity of choice. That's the beauty of being a human being. That why we are the apex of the world right now. Because we are aware of that power. So to me, I'm going to go with hope. But two sides of the guardrail. You have that fear, you have that hope, and you have the governing body that keeps that in line. Where you decide to go on that, people, is up to you. But again, if you're here today, you're a part of that 1% that's trying to make a difference in a world full of fear. Hmm. That's very well put, we'll see. Um... And you're driving a hard bargain. Um, you're you're making you're making you've made a lot of really great points. I I would say this. You see, I I was actually sitting here looking at my looking at my device here. I was glancing at it, and I thought about I thought about what you said. 
there are many opportunities for us to be good, to make great decisions, to be better because of what we've gone through. We're, we're wise creatures. We're, we're intelligent, um, both emotionally, mentally, whatever. And I feel as though all of those, all of those great acts are like apps on this phone, right? We can we can download those great ideas and those those great opportunities to heal the world, whether you're in the, the medical field during these past few years of the crisis that we have been going through, um, or you are on the side of enforcing the law or helping your fellow man. I, I feel as though those good karma, those good karma sandwiches that we end up consuming help us. It, it, it helps us to allows us to, to release the dopamine that we have and we feel good about it. And that to me is how it feels to put an app on the phone. But we'll see. I would say that before we get those apps on that phone, the phone is bare. The phone does not have that within itself. And at any point, we could easily restore factory settings and go right back to that. So is it is it fair to say that, yes, we do have the opportunity to be good, we have the opportunity to make great decisions, but at our core, what is it that people are more drawn to? You mentioned our podcast, for example. It's no secret that we have been struggling to reach the masses, but we know what has not been struggling to reach the masses. Some of the most, in my opinion, the most deplorable, idiotic, somewhat entertaining but also flawed content. That is what is being most consumed. Most people are talking about those things and not necessarily talking about the development of man, of you personally, of your, of you helping yourself. You can make that decision. You can decide that, yes, I am going to stop consuming this crap and allow myself to be better, but it is a desire that you need to have to be better. So what happens to those who do not have that desire innately? What happens to what happens to those who decide that they don't want to consume good content or at least content that would force them to change or encourage them to do better, right? Because in essence we're saying to them that hey, you you guys have not reached your own potential. Mm -hmm. So them looking at that, they may say, "Well, what who are you to tell me what I can do?" Who are you to say that I cannot reach my full potential or I have not done it yet and I can only do it with your help? May I interject into yeah. what you said right there? Absolutely. That's that's the that's the best part of it, though, is to pose the question, because yeah. in some cases. You just go through life experiences without a question being posed, without being challenged. Mm -hmm. And most people tend to revert into the road that's easy. They tend to revert to the to the part that's going to allow them to deviate from addressing those core issues. Sure. Now, as you said, with the device and it being just as is before the apps and everything is added, isn't that essentially what life is? We're born and we compute like data and we learn as we go like we absorb like a sponge but that is the experiences that we're gathering and hey dig this we're getting those same set experiences from those around us now let me ask you one question <clears throat> to challenge what you're saying yep you can have two people that grow up in the same environment go up, but for i'll give you an example some people who grow up in a drug infested home mm. or alco alcoholic abusing home and both experience the same things sure you have one that deviates into what they saw and the trauma that they experienced mm -hmm. and they absorb that to believe that that's how life is supposed to be so they go with it and that's generally out of fear because they're afraid to see different because they don't know what different could be mm -hmm. so they'll never take that leap as opposed to you could have someone who experienced the same things, but they paid attention to other things in life. Mm -hmm. They paid attention to other things to learn more about themselves, themselves. 
And maybe they didn't know the answer, but they knew something out there had to be better. So they relied on hope and determination and dedication and, and, and the willpower to look and pursue something better. And they did mm-hmm. because they chose for it. Listen, my life was not easy personally, as you know, Jay. You know, you've known me for a good more than half my life now. Yeah. And you know a lot of personal things, man. And where I grew up at and some of the things that I was into and the decisions I made to know that there could be better because I believe, and I wasn't going to be another statistic in my family history. I chose to be better because I desired to be better because ultimately I believe that we could do better in this world. I could be better than what the statistic was for someone like where I reside and where I was, where I was. And that was because I, my hope, no different, the same thing where when I got divorced and everything I went through in that part of my life, I could have just reverted back through my fear and not made any changes and adjustments. And you were there, part of that, brother. And I love and appreciate you for that because that was a hellacious part of my life. But this is what I'm sharing to say these experiences can change you. Life can change. You. And yes, at any given time, you could revert one way or the other. But that's the power of choice. You have to stay true and see the accountability for you. So for myself, I decided to see that I could do better and be better. And therefore, today I am better. Now, guess what? I'm not even through the day. Who knows what adversity is going to come my way? That's mm-hmm. going to present that present those two totem poles of fear or hope. Something can happen today. For example, God forbid something happened to my child. What do I do? Right? Something the the most precious thing to me. Do I lose my hope in a better tomorrow if something were to happen to something, the most precious thing to me in my world? Or do I allow fear to give in and I become that which I desire not to be? That's the choice. So the same way we could pose those questions to those people to say, who are you? That's exactly a rhetorical question of, yeah, who are you? You should ask yourself that question for you. Because when the lights come off, and the, the, the videos are down and you're by yourself and you look in that mirror, who the hell do you see? Mm. Do you like who you are? The problem is we live in a world full of people who don't mm. because they don't know who they are because they're busy being what they think everyone else wants them to be. Sure. So they're living on the spectrum of fear, which is why the world is the way it is, which is why politics and greed and everything is the way it is because there are key components of things in people's lives where they just, they let that fear get the better of them. Of This person can't have more than me. I got to have more than them. Or these people won't respect me if I don't exude a certain level of power mm-hmm. over people. You, you see what I'm saying? But that's a choice, right? You, choo- you can choose to do that from the experiences that you've gained. So that's also what you've learned from your upbringing and your surroundings. So you're going to generally... Generally, most people tend to gravitate towards either that hope or that fear based on what the, their experiences and upcomings were. So instinctively, they will go with what feels more safer than actually take the time to stop and pose that question and reevaluate where they are in life to see, could I do better? Could I be better as a person? You know why they don't? Most people don't because it's hard. It's not easy. It's not meant to be because that's the greatest thing that you'll do as a human being. That the option we have, for example, as I mentioned earlier with the lion, the lion has to hunt. It doesn't have the ch- the choice to become vegan and stop killing. It does. It's a, that's a part of its makeup. Mm. We have the innate, innate ability to choose. So as long as we have the right to choose, Jay, we will always have hope, and we could be better. Now. Even if that's just one person in the world that makes that choice, they're still good in us. They're still good in in, in what that looks like for morality. There's still hope for my offsprings and their offsprings, for your offsprings to come. There's still hope. And if you don't believe in that, then you can't believe in tomorrow. You might as well don't have kids. You might as well don't because this ain't the world for them. Well, think about it that way. It's no, it's no reason. What, what will be the purpose to keep going on if you know that this is what you're going to be in for? 
a dog eat dog world for 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 the rest for for the rest of forever to come and listen I'm no fool to knowing that what we see out here is what it is. We are in a society where the total pole is much higher in fear than it is on the side of hope. But again, as long as you have those people out there like us that's willing to fight that good fight because we believe in better, because we believe you matter, then you are so damn worth it. And then you too can make a difference for you first. And that will be a ripple effect for those around you because they'll see your change and maybe they may inspire them to want to change too. So, I can't not give up and don't believe in hope because hope has gotten me to where I'm at today. And I'm far from perfect, but I'm better than what I was living in fear. I'm better than that. And you can be too. So I'm going to have to stand on my 10 toes down on that, stand my ground on this one. And for those out there, this is one of the first few conversations we've had, I think in our entire life where we see different ends of the spectrum. I respect exactly what Jay said. I totally understand. I can see where he's coming from with it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like personally, for the world to get to that point, we've been beat up so much that we just gave up hope. You gave up hope if you get if you get to a point where you don't where you choose not to see the good in people. Because again, that's a choice. Well hold on right there. Because you're it is a choice and we're choosing to have hope. We're choosing to see the good in people, mm. but it still seems like we have to make an effort in order to get to that point where yeah. on the other side, you don't necessarily have to make the effort to make an evil decision. If I want to rob a bank today, I can go ahead and rob that bank, especially if I'm, if there aren't any consequences to what I'm, what I'm going to face. If somebody mm. says, well, you can, you can go and you can go into that ATM, $35,000, because I need to feed my family. Now, if it's justified, is it evil? If I'm about to, if I'm about to be evicted, is it, is it now, am I now making a good choice to make sure that my family's fed, even though on the other side, I'm making an evil decision to take money? Well, see, at that point, it wouldn't necessarily be defined as that because, it's a choice, just like you can, just like any one of us can have the same issues. Like I said, same person going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I could choose not to do that because I, I'm taking from something or someone else, or I can be bringing harm to something or someone else. And ultimately, hell, that can put me in jail and take me away from my family. Or if we're living in a world where there's like, like it's total martial law and yeah. there's nothing like that, nothing like I still that. run the risk of death. I'm not saying that. Now, now, see, this is where the line get blurred because we're talking about survival. Mm. Now, you gather what you need to be sustainable. Mm. But do I really need to go that route for, for just pure greed? Now, now here's, now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Okay. okay. Again, it's a matter of restraint, right? Mm. Where it becomes a technicality of like, okay, well, well what do you need as opposed to, to survive? As opposed to, I'll have enough to just get me by. Like I had, you know, or I'll take all I can get. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a matter of necessities, right? Versus just the want to have. So instinctively, we, of course, if we're in a world where we have to survive, you have to take out the, take out parts of the aspect of what's considered to be morally right and wrong because you're trying to survive. This, that's a that that is totally different mm. thing is we aren't at that place in society now so if we focus strictly on where we are now and not have hypothetical what could happen you do have a choice now there's options out there what happens is people get put in positions where and i want you to be clear don't think i don't understand you know you have good people that sometimes make the not best decision because they're thinking of the moment now and they're they, they're, they're a bit irrational on impulse because, because they're put in certain difficult circumstances where maybe like we've seen with John Q, the movie John Q, if you guys ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Good man in a really unfortunate circumstance. And he did what he thought was the best thing to do. Hell, if it was my kid, I don't know. But what I would do is the best that I could do. Mm -hmm. I would do what I feel is morally right. You know? And that's what I'm saying. It becomes a choice to the person. And only you can really define if you think that's considered to be right or wrong, because you ultimately have to deal with the actions for the decisions you made. So who am I to justify that that answer for you? 
because we may not believe in the same God or we may not believe in the same entity or higher power. And that's irrelevant to the core of having the, the, the choice between embracing into hope or diluting yourself into the fear of what's happening. Perception is reality, as you said earlier, Jay. So in, in difficult moments, you find out sometimes who you are. In those really pivotal moments, you find out who you are mm. to your core. But some, you know, you got to be put in an old position so to, to know, you know, what you'll do. You don't know. We don't know. Mm. Obviously, like we were in a walk of this scenario, the world would definitely be, like you said, these total anarchy sort of scenarios, totally understandable. Like mm. we're in a world where greed and all those things, let's be clear here. We're in a world where it supersedes a lot of hope. Uh, let's be clear like it, it could be 80 20 right now in the world yeah, yeah. but th that's just what we are and, and and this is just what you vis visually see but again my point is as long as you have people out there like ourselves or like you know historical figures who have strived to try to make a difference mm -hmm. that gives you that lets you know that there's enough hope there's enough hope in the unsung hero who's willing to try but mm -hmm. again no one's perfect either in either in on the spectrum jay nobody's perfect so no one's out here living such a righteous life where they make no wrong decisions. Sure. So who, who so who's to say what's truly to be evil or good? Circumstances and situations from life experiences put you in situations that ultimately you make a choice out of one of those paths, in my opinion, mm. a, a fear driven based choice. Or you trust in faith and your hope that the decision you decide to go with is going to be the best one. Hell, if you're out there, you got debt right now. Like Jay said, you can go rob the bank. You can go do something that we're not advocating for. It. You can go do something you think that's going to make you that quick money. And find out that maybe that wasn't the best decision for you. Mm -hmm. But does that make you a horrible person? You know, to your core, to those who know you, mm -hmm. to the rest of the world who don't know you procedurally, they probably going to think so. Oh, you know, but they don't know you. They don't know your struggles. They don't know your experience. So I would never pass judgment and say that on someone. But what I will say is, you know, this is why it's important to really embrace the power of choice, because as you learn, manifest what that is through your experiences, you understand how impactful they are. So, yeah, I think it comes back to that. Like, no matter where we go or how we slice it on either end of the spectrum and the ability to be good or evil, your choices dictate for you those things. But to me, it's perception, which usually generally from what I see, like, you see a lot of these people in these places that are quick to shoot someone, that's fair. You know, it's not like they're trusting in the better man or trusting, in, you know, I'm going to let this go, I'm going to walk away, I'm going to leave this be because you're trusting in, I'm going to leave this where it's at, have faith that there'll be another day, I'll let this go, or I don't have to have this animosity with this person. It doesn't have to get like this. Hell, you can go to the club and something can jump off just like that. And, and you know, you had no attention. You don't know who this person could be vice versa you know so it's just you in life is, is experiences and circumstances put you in really weird predicaments mm. so it's really re really critical to that you really assess how you view life so i think we have the ability to have both in us but it's a, from a moral perspective we we have the ability to have good instinctive choices and bad listen we it ain't a person out there that's watching this that hasn't done something wrong in their life at some point in time. I'm guilty of it. Everyone's Jay's guilty of it. So are you. Because, sure. yeah. but you know why we're not perfect. But guess what? I do choose today to do better, so that I can do my best and not make those choices or whatever I've done that has not been right. Mm. So you can too. And that's why I state my case. Sure. And I think it's a strong case you've made, we'll see. And I. I know, yeah, you're right. This is probably one of the first episodes where we're we're on opposite sides, but I think it's important to have opposite perspectives. I think in society, there's so many different opportunities that we have to share those different perspectives and learn from each other. Um, so just like what we've done here today on the Acromas podcast, I encourage you guys to do the same amongst your family, your friends, people you know, strangers even. Have these type of conversations, really dive into it to, to try to discover more, not just about you, but about others. I think to sum it all up, we'll see, we, we are all in this together. And sometimes we all have to make decisions that 
we believe are justifiable in order to to make sure that we are still on the good side of history or that we allow ourselves to be better the next day from the other. Um, so I, I would say we continue to do that. We continue to grow. We continue to learn more about each other. And if in the past it was a case where it was innate to do something that we probably should not have do should not have done rather, I think that as we continue to grow and continue to build, that we make those decisions to do better, that we make those decisions to continue to have hope in each other, um, to help our fellow man, because the world will be better because of it. Right? We have the opportunity the next hundred, two hundred, even thousand years to make this world a much better place. To raise, to raise our, our youth to be able to take this world by storm and grow it into something that we couldn't imagine before. And it takes us to do that, to completely change the, the outlook of our society, um, what the world may look like in 50 to 100 years. It's on us to make those decisions today. So I, I do want to pose this question to you out there. Do you believe that humans are innately good or evil? The best response that we get for this will be featured on the beginning of the next episode of your Chromas podcast, as well as a YouTube short during the week. So you have two opportunities to get these voices heard, to get your answers out there, and for us to communicate back with you. Uh, we'll see. This was a very, very fun episode. And I, I knew it was going to be as soon as you said, yeah, no, nah, I believe innately good. And I'm like, ah, I think I'm on the other end. Um, <laughs> it's really good to have these discussions. And I... I encourage all of you guys to have these discussions in society, regardless what side of the of the fence you're lying on. Make sure that you have your voice heard. Make sure that your opinions are heard because your opinion is as important as everybody else's. For sure, uh, because you matter. And these are the best ways to, to learn about those things and learn more about yourself uh, in a conversation such as what we provided to you today. It's all in fun, all in love, but we we both come away learning more from one another and learning from a perspective in enlightened ways that maybe you didn't see it before uh, as either something of what I pose or what Jay pose. So we're really interested to hear what you have to say. So guys, please, let's continue that conversation. Like, please, let us hear what you have to say, what side of the totem pole that you fall in and what you think. Or, heck, you might have a whole different perspective of, of, of viewing of this whole conversation. We're all game and we're ears, man. Not just us, but the rest of the community too. So please be sure to do those things. Drop those comments, like, share this if you really enjoyed this content to someone else who you feel as though that could benefit from it or be interested in it. Looking to learn and to invest in themselves and make sure to turn on that notification bell so the next episode we drop, you'll be getting it first. Mm. And look, and that's that's all we want. We want you to be getting this first. Uh, because this is the these are the type of conversations that we all should be having in society. I think it brings us closer together, knowing that we can go forth and agree or disagree on things. That's part of being human. It's part of growth. So we want to thank you for joining us once again on the Acromas podcast. If you were listening, that means you were listening on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. If you're watching, that can only mean one thing, that you are watching us on YouTube. And as Will C said, and I'm going to repeat as he just said, we need you to like, we need you to we need you to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. The next time you're on YouTube and you're scrolling down your feed, this discussion will be at the very top of it. And you'll be able to participate in these types of discussions going forward. And most of all, Will C, because I believe in hope and I believe in you, you're going to make sure to know that this is free. And you're going to do each and every single one of those things. See, CJ, the power of hope. See, I'm choosing it right now. It's a live example. See, I brought it all full circle, guys. So please don't prove me wrong. <laughs> like, turn on that notification bell. Make sure to share our content, guys, uh, and subscribe to it. We really would greatly appreciate it. We want to keep growing with you. Keep rocking with us. And we'll keep bringing these gems to you each and every single week. We appreciate you because you matter. 100%. And guys, stay hopeful. Stay blessed. Stay strong. Keep making those right decisions, and you'll be better because of it. Until next week, it's your boy, J.H. Gibbons. I'm going to see.